Boots, Bats and Balls is sponsored by nextbet.co.uk. Chills Bar, Baisley, sponsors of Port Vale content on Six Towns Radio. Tom Pope, Swindon, first of all, let's talk about that. Um, 3 0 down, um, you got a goal to make it 3 1, you usually got 1 3 2. Did you think at that time you might be able to claw a point out of it? Well, you think so. The the momentum was with us. Mm. You know, we were certainly on top, and you could sense with the crowd and certainly the players that they were on the back foot and they realised they were in a game. I think when you get back to 3 2. It'd have probably been a bit wiser to, you know, gain his composure a little bit and, you know, regroup and because there was still a good ten, fifteen minutes left. So, you know, it wasn't as though we still needed a couple of goals. It was we were right back in the game, and, you know, we went on another a break, pushed loads of men forward and got sucker punched on the counter. So, you know, it's it was one of them games where it was up and down, up and down and. In the end, it was down, but could easily have been up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just got to regroup after something like that. You don't expect to go any game and concede five goals, do you? No, not at all. You know, they're they're a decent side, and I think we made them look a lot better than they actually were. I think, you know, we we certainly had chances to get something out of the game, and they seemed to finish every chance that they had. So, you know, it was difficult one take, but. You know, we'll move on to the next game. Yeah, of course. Um, against Crawley and Gillingham, you came off the bench, scored against Gillingham. Everyone's got to get a chance. Did you think you know he's going to give Huggle a chance? I never saw George coming in, to be honest. Uh, yeah. You know, he hadn't really trained with us that much. So, you know, I think when you've got quality like Uzi and Willow and Dodsey and and George in and around the place, and if you're not playing well, you're going to get dropped. Um, but at the same time, you know, I never really had it, any chances. So, as a striker, if you're missing chances, you can you can understand. Um, but I never really had any chances to miss. And the gaffer obviously thought he'd freshen it up a little bit. And obviously, the results at Crawley proved that it was the right one. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of statistics. Like Tom Pope hasn't scored for so many games. He's still going to put in 100% every game if he can and uh, and play your best, aren't you? Well, you try your best. You know, I think the last few weeks I was running here, there and everywhere. Bar being in the box, I think, you know, certainly at Sheffield United when you're down to 10 men and you're on your own up front, yeah. you know, you find yourself chasing shadows for 90 minutes and, you know, that's what it was. And obviously... Playing again on the Tuesday at Crawley, the gaffer had obviously thought I'd, I needed a rest, and George come in and played brilliantly. So you know there was no complaints from me there. And then obviously the Gillingham game won't go in his way first off, and the gaffer put me on, and I've been managed to get a couple of goals since. For you sitting there on the bench, was it a bit of an eye opener because you haven't done it for so long? Yeah, of course it was. You know it was it was more frustrating because at Crawley. Um, we played that well we put that many balls into the box got that many decent crosses in and when you sat on the bench you, you're just disappointed because we probably put more balls good crosses into the box first half against Crawley than we had in the last four games I'd played so I think as a striker when you're seeing the team play to your strengths and you're not on the pitch to to do it then it's frustrating but you know, like I say it was one of them games where we dominated from start to finish, created a lot of chances, and you know I, I'd got no complaints. Um, and then obviously the Gillingham game, first off, I don't think we played too badly, but you're losing a game of football, and the gaffer thought it was the right thing to bring me on, and we won two one. So you know it swings and roundabouts football, and you have your ups and downs, and you know I've got two in my last two, so hopefully I can. Kick on from there. Yeah, a break from league football this weekend, of course, it's the FA Cup. Um, Shortwood in the draw. What were your first initial thoughts when you saw Port Vale are away at Shortwood? I'd never heard of them. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not normally quite into me non league football. I normally know and have heard of m- most teams, um, but I'd never, <laughs> I'd never heard of them. Um, 
But you know, every year there's a there's an upset in the FA Cup, and we've just got to make sure that we're not one of them. I think if you take the game lightly and go into it with the wrong frame of mind, then you're going to have another Chase Town or Canvey Island on the card. So we just got to play ourselves right, and if we do that, then then we'll win the game. Of course, you started off a career, but you went to Biddle Fix for quite a while, so you're used to non-league football. And um, I know Biddle Fix didn't necessarily have a cup run, uh, but uh, you know you're in the early stages of the FA Cup, and you know you want to to get there. These players have got like quite a lot of bite and quite a lot of hunger, haven't they, at that level? Well, of course they have. You know, the FA Cup was always massive for us. Um, we had to start in the preliminary round. We didn't even make the first qualifying round. We had to go through the first first preliminary round then the second pre- preliminary round and then it's your, the first qualifying round so you know at Biddulph it was always massive to try and get to that first qualifying round and you know I think we managed it once and once we got knocked out so you know but it's interesting it means that it's a lot of money for, for these kind of clubs you know certainly for Shortwood I'm sure the, the money they've earned over the last few weeks from it's going to benefit them so you know they're going to want progress and it's going to be a difficult game but like I say if we do the right things and apply ourselves right we'll we'll win the game and shot window for some players as well isn't it oh yeah yeah you know as much for them as it is us um, you know when you when you play these kind of games and on TV yeah when you're on tally it's um, it's one of them games where for the forwards you've got to be looking to try and score a few goals and if you're a defender, you, you're hoping you can keep a clean sheet. You know, when you're playing a team from a few leagues below you, then, you know, as a striker, you, you've got to be looking at it as a chance to get a few goals. Yeah, I suppose Mickey's looking at it as well as he has a potential banana skin, so he's going to have to put, a, you know, a full strength team out there. There's going to be no rested any players or anything like that. Well, knowing the gaffer, I, I want to thought so. He doesn't take anything lightly. Um, you know, he certainly doesn't want us losing a cup game to Shortwood United, so I'm sure he'll do everything he can to get the side through to the next round. Cheers, Tom. Thanks for that, mate. No problem.